Warning! Viewer's discretion is advised, as this may contain mature or triggering content. Story Prompt The Road Less Taken Title Home at Last Marcus, do you think you can come in early tomorrow? Marcus sighed. I guess. Wasn't Kate supposed to come in, though? His boss gave a nervous laugh. She called in sick. Marcus's brow twitched. This is the fourth time. His boss nodded. I know, but we need someone to replace her before I fire her. I have interviews set up with three promising people, so hopefully you won't have to cover for her after this. He sighed. Fine, just hire someone soon, before I quit. I want to take a break here and there. His boss nodded. Of course. Once someone is hired that can handle their own, I'll let you take your vacation. Marcus smiled. Sounds good. Counting on you, then. His boss nodded. Thank you. You're the only one I can truly trust to come in and have everything set up for this meeting. It's an extremely important one. Marcus nodded as his boss went on to tell him how this could be the breakthrough they needed and change was just around the corner. But honestly, he didn't care. Life was simply life, and it was boring and never changing. One day of work after another, never-ending bills, no love life. It sucked, and the worst thing was, it felt like some part of him was missing. He had noticed this feeling long ago. It felt like he was out of place. As if he vanished, even as his boss claimed he was important, he could just vanish and not a single thing change. No one would miss him. Now, this didn't mean he was thinking of suicide. That wasn't it. It simply felt as if he had no meaning in his life, no true purpose, and that bothered him. He gathered his stuff, shoving his laptop in his bag and standing. See you tomorrow, Mr. Fang. His boss nodded, waving to him. As he stepped out, a warm spring breeze greeted him, and he sighed once more. He wanted to go for a hike, somewhere far away from other people. He was standing at the bus stop, wondering when it would arrive when more people joined, and he sighed once more. His eyes ventured to a path on the side. It would lead him to his house if he felt like walking for a bit. It'll be a while before I can go on a hike. Why not? Besides, right now, he didn't want to be around these people, and the forest seemed to beckon to him. He headed towards it. It was just a simple nature path that had been there for a long time. It was said to be protected by a nature spirit, and no one would dare incur the being's wrath. At one time, a company had tried demolishing it, but before they even began, every man had fallen sick, and then the machines began to malfunction. Since then, people stayed away from it. Marcus, though, he felt relaxed walking through the slightly overgrown path, taking in the sense of pure nature and seeming to block out the sounds of the city. It felt like home. It always had. When he needed to get away from work, he just came here and sat within it. Though, never once had he actually walked through the entire thing. He closed his eyes, taking in the sounds of nature, and a soft smile crossed his lips. Marcus. His eyes snapped open as a woman's voice called his name, but there was no one around. The voice sent shivers up his spine, but not in a bad way. It felt like he knew the voice. It kind of freaked him out, but now that he was looking around, the sun no longer reached his path. Has it really become this overgrown? He sighed. Maybe I'm just hearing things from overworking. Damn, that's not bad enough I have to come in early tomorrow now I'm hearing shit. He ran a hand over his face. I can't seem to relax now. Marcus! He froze. This time, the voice was clearer. His eyes opened, and he blinked a few times as a woman with long, black, wavy hair stood inches from him, her green eyes shining brightly as she smiled. My dear boy, welcome home! What stood out the most, though, was her pointed ears. E elf The woman giggled. Are you so shocked? Don't you remember me? Your mother? Confusion filled him, but then he started to chuckle. It's official. I've died. I've died, and instead of going to heaven, I'm here. Is this my heaven? 
I don't ever remember having any hopes of becoming an elf. He groaned, turning from the woman. I must have overworked myself to death. Jeez, that's a lame way to die, he muttered as he began walking from the way he came. Honey, the woman called to him. He could hear the confusion in her voice, but he didn't stop or look back. I wonder if anyone will miss me. No, more than that, will I even be properly buried? He asked the heir with a frown. He didn't have a family. He had been found on the side of the road when he was five. No memory of anything, just starving. He was lost in his thoughts and didn't notice when a man stepped out in front of him, and he walked straight into him. Sorry, Marcus muttered, before his eyes moved up to get a better look at the man. His skin was dark and his eyes blue, but he had pointed ears just like the woman did. Son, you have no idea how long we have been waiting for you to return, and you think this is a joke. Marcus stared at the man before glancing back at the woman who had been calling his name. It's not? The man before him frowned. Why would it be? Why don't you stop for a moment and take in everything? Look around you, take in the sounds, the smells, and then tell me that this is a joke. Gel, dear, you're going to scare him off before we even get to know him, the woman said, closing the gap between them. Marcus looked around, doing as the man said. The once dark forest path was now clear, full of sunlight. The path beneath him was smooth cobblestone, and the sounds of the birds he'd listened to moments ago sounded strange. He could hear different creatures among them. They sounded strange, but familiar. He noticed the sounds around him seemed clearer, somehow clean. It was an odd way to think about sound. He reached up, touching his ears, and found them to be longer and pointed. He wanted to feel fear from this. A part of his brain knew that everything happening right now was something like a fairy tale. It was something that should have been making him feel panicked, but it wasn't there. The panic he knew he should feel wasn't present. He felt comfort instead, which only confused him further. Well, introduce yourself. He's been gone since he was five. He clearly doesn't know or remember us, the woman said as she pushed the man closer to Marcus. The large man seemed nervous, and it made Marcus want to chuckle, but that would be rude. My name is Gail Vontz. I am your father. The woman smiled. And I am Layla Vance, your mother. As crazy as it may seem, I have longed for you to come back to us, but could do nothing to get you back. Marcus nodded, taking in their words. So then, I'm not human. She nodded. Haven't you always felt out of place? He nodded once more. It was a strange feeling, but I've always preferred nature. His father nodded. We are nature elves, so it makes sense. A frown crossed Marcus's face. If I crossed over to the human realm at a young age, why didn't you follow me, or why didn't you come get me? Layla frowned now. You didn't cross over on your own. You were stolen away by an evil witch. She was mad at your father and I for taking back the lands she had soaked in her darkness. She lured you out one night when we were away. We tried. Tears pricked Layla's eyes, and Gail pulled her into a gentle hug. We tried getting to you, son. We tried every possible thing we could. Even tried forcing the witch to open the space for us to get you. But we found out that only when you were one with nature again and in the mystic forest would you be able to cross over. Your mother and I have been watching as you grew. It pained us not being a part of your life. A few things started to make sense, like why he felt out of place with the humans, why he felt peace in nature, and why when the humans hurt nature, he felt an ungodly ache from it. There was no reason for him to try and deny what he was. Right now, he felt good. For the first time in his life, he felt whole, like the part of him that had been missing was there. So this is home. Layla and Gail nodded. Yes, and there's so much more for you to see, to learn, to feel. 
You may not remember it, but with time, we are sure you'll remember it all. Marcus smiled softly. Then, m mother, father, I hope from here on out we can live together and make up for the time we have been apart. Layla nodded, pulling from her husband and harshly hugging Marcus. I am so happy to have you in my arms again, my sweet boy. Marcus returned her hug, tears pricking his eyes. I'm glad to be home at last, mother. Sorry for keeping you waiting for so long. The end! This is just kind of a short, sweet, simple little story. But to me, the meaning behind it is far deeper than one could possibly think. It's about reconnecting with something you may not even know you needed. Taking a step back and looking at life and seeing where you need to go. What path you should follow. Oftentimes, we are in such a rush we forget there are other paths to take and sometimes those paths lead us to where we need to go. But, I do hope that you enjoyed this. I will see you guys next time. Bye!